Hello, and thank you for exploring Lakehead International's videos. My name is Jordan, and I am the International New and Social Media Officer. I'm also the host of the Lakehead International Live series, a fun and informative way for you to connect with current international students, professors, and ask questions about admissions and everything Lakehead. You are about to watch a recording from one of our previous live sessions. If any questions arise throughout the video, please do not hesitate to comment below. If you would like to check out some of our upcoming live sessions, please head over to our website at lakeheadu.ca forward slash international dash live. Let's begin. So without further ado, uh, we'll chat a bit about uh, the faculty itself and, and then we'll dive into the programs also. So uh, I'll uh, chat a bit myself and then for our panel, if anyone would like to jump in and add to what I, what I speak to, please feel free to. Uh, so I encourage our viewers, if you're interested in joining us, uh, you can join the next generation of global citizens in one of our engaging social sciences and humanities programs. You will thrive in our dynamic and vibrant lear learning environments with small classes, high impact practices and award winning faculty who know your name and engage in your success. Explore the diversity of human experience across time and place and investigate the ways in which meaning is made, how our worldviews are represented, and how new ideas take hold and shape us in our world. In the social sciences and humanities, we explore those large and enduring questions related to ways in which human beings think and behave, how they interact with each other and their environment, and how they communicate ideas about human experience through a rich range of research topics. Lakehead is ranked as Canada's top 10 primarily undergraduate university for social sciences and humanities research and offers you the opportunity to gain experience that combine academic studies with community-based and hands-on learning through a social justice lens. I hope that covers a, a broad overview of our faculty. I know that I can also speak to our graduates who are ready to make a difference in our communities and our world. So whether they're, they're staying here in Thunder Bay or Aurelia, or they're, they're entering the, the larger market of Canada and then potentially international job market, uh, they are certainly making a difference in those communities and, and the world itself. Uh, I'll look to our panel to see if anyone has anything to add about the Faculty of Science and Environmental Studies, sorry, pardon me, Social Sciences and Humanities, um, or, or we can move on to the next slide where we'll chat a bit about double majors, and I certainly would appreciate if, if anyone wants to speak to double majors here. See so if you had nods, that's good, okay. So I'll, I'll chat a bit about double majors. Many of our social sciences and humanity programs have the option to pursue two majors at the same time. A double major or combined honors program, combined bachelor's program, permits more thorough inter interdisciplinary exploration of appropriate themes. Um, so I'll pass it to the panel and I, wanna, I would like to know in your opinion and in your experience, why is it important that uh, students in the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities uh, explore more than one major in a humanities course. You want us to speak now? Sure. Oh, okay. Well, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, it's a rather uncertain job environment now, and so it helps to be, have a wide variety of skills, not to be over-specialized in just one area, and uh, employers are often looking for um, employees to be have a broad base of skills and so forth. So if, if you are interdisciplinary, um, that really helps. The other thing too is, is you don't have to do a double major to be interdisciplinary in this way. Interdisciplinary studies, we, we have it built in that students study two different disciplines and there's a wide variety that they can choose from. Certainly, yeah, and I really like to note about how, uh, given today's times, the, the world can be a bit uncertain and of course, we want to make sure that our, our graduates and our students are, are well prepared for entering the job market, whether it's entering in a part-time role, an internship or a summer role, or of course, the end goal of, of either moving on to the next step of their journey in the education field or securing full-time gainful employment. And so having that diverse knowledge that, that spans multiple areas of study and multiple majors uh, whether it be a double major or in our interdisciplinary studies program is, is a significant benefit. Uh, Kevin, I see that your, your mic's off. Did you want to add in there too? 
Yeah, I was just going to add that uh, you can think about double majors as being pretty closely complementary. Uh, you could do a history major, but we also have a really unique and important indigenous learning department at Lakehead. And so you could really study history from different perspectives through different disciplinary lens. And so you could think about them close or you could think about them as a really different and complementary in other ways. Um, I know humanities majors who will uh, major in English and then major in computer science. Uh, and those two things probably come together in the kinds of work that you do, Jordan, as a new media specialist, where you need to be able to communicate effectively, but you also need to know your way around technology. So you can think about double majors in, in at least those two in other ways, as well as, as Larry mentioned, you can just be interdisciplinary uh, in itself. Certainly, and, uh, and to add to that, I wanted to say that uh, I really like to know how you can almost navigate your, your your path yourself and you can either choose whether the, the two majors are going to be complementary naturally or whether you're going to draw the connections. You are a, an academic yourself joining us at a post-secondary institution in Canada. It's a, it's a highly regarded degree of course and so your academic is, is your journey. So whether you draw the connection yourself between two majors and you really call on your own passions or if you're going after something that's naturally uh, been regarded as collaborative experiences or, or they naturally go together. Uh, Dr. Wei, I'll pass it over to you as well. Um, two things. I, I think the way in which actually the faculty functions, um, whether you are doing an interdisciplinary studies or you're doing a double major, you are required anyway to take courses in other programs anyway, right? So that itself gives you a broad um, um, set of skills and education um, without just focusing on, um, the, in the, on the program that, that, that you originally registered for. A double major, of course, is a, is, is a fantastic way, the way in which um, my colleagues have explained it. But even if you didn't do that, if you are in our programs, then you are required to take courses outside of your, your majors. Um, the second thing is, at the beginning of, of your presentation, you did mention that about 96% or so of our graduates get jobs in the first year. And I think part of it has to do with that and the way in which we prepare students. Certainly, yeah, and so, so I can also add to that, uh, always I'm adding here, but uh, with our graduates and with our employers, of course, we have a, a strong hold in our communities of Thunder Bay and Aurelia, but of course, we're recognized as a significant university in Canada, both in, in research terms, but also academic terms. And so when our students are, are applying their jobs, Lakehead University stands out on a resume and people know if they're a past graduate of Lakehead University, if they know someone that went to Lakehead University, they understand that we, we structure our degrees to have a very diverse range of courses that are required, a part of the degree requirements. But we still provide that flexibility so that a student can structure their own program to what their passions are and what they, the, what they will want to expand on. So next I'll chat about undergraduate programs here at Lakehead University. On your, on your screens, pardon me, uh, you'll see the full list of our undergraduate programs here at Lakehead. So I won't read them all. Um, if I read them all, we'll just be here for a couple minutes. Uh, but of course we have representation from uh, several of these programs. Um, we don't have representation from outdoor recreation, parks, and tourism, but I, I specifically wanted to have a mention of that because it is a program that we consider one of a kind in Canada. That speaks to both of it's our physical location here in Thunder Bay and our connection to uh, sort of the, these natural ecosystems and environments, but also the fact that the faculty and, and staff members that are a part of that faculty really add to the experience. I have slides upcoming where we're going to dive into that program a bit more, dive into the unique learning opportunities of that program. Um, but I'll pass it over to our panel if they wanted to uh, speak to any one of the programs on the screen now. Of course, we have some more program highlights coming up. Looks like we'll, we'll, we'll take a pass on that one. No worries, that's okay. So next uh, we'll chat about graduate programs. Oh, pardon me, sorry. So graduate programs, we do have uh, four master's programs, English history, social justice studies, and sociology. Um, the, the first three, English history and social justice studies, offer uh, course-based options as well. So um, I, I can explain that briefly. If any one of our panel wants to highlight or elaborate, by all means, feel free. You're, you are the instructor, so you'll know it better than I do, most likely. Um, 
But master's programs are offered typically in one of three options. So you can do a thesis-based, a course-based, or a project-based. Um, so the four on your screen are offered in thesis-based, but also, as I mentioned, the first three also offer course-based options. Course-based options um, structure the program so that students are required to take very pres prescribed courses so that we understand that you will meet the requirements of the overall degree and you will graduate with the knowledge that we anticipated you would going into it. For thesis-based options, you get to work with one of our dedicated faculty members as a supervisor and you get to conduct your own research and write a thesis project on that. With that, it really allows you to uh, diversify and, and explore those passions, as I mentioned, and, and really focus in on areas of study that you would like to learn about and you would like to expand your knowledge about. This is your opportunity to essentially um, gain knowledge in an area that you might see fit as a career outcome in the end goal, um, but also just working with some of our faculty members. Uh, you, you might go into it thinking you have an idea of what you want to study, or you might have no idea what you want to study, but once you get to meet some of your supervisors or understand the research areas they are passionate about, uh, I'm, I'm certain that you will also understand why they're passionate about it and also start to grow interest and then want to learn more yourself. So I, I know that um, we'll, we'll go on to the program highlights so that we have the opportunity to, to cover many, many slides here. This first program highlight I want to chat about is the outdoor recreation, parks, and tourism, as I mentioned before. So in support of Lakehead University's commitment to educating students who are recognized for leadership and independent critical thinking and who are aware of social and environmental responsibilities, the School of Outdoor Recreation and Parks and Tourism provides theoretical, applied, and practical study in all aspects of outdoor recreation. It promotes shared responsibility for learning and research it undertakes research on natural-based recreation, parks, and tourism. It supports a broad scope of activities from local to international scales, including indigenous and multicultural perspectives. And it's also, it's the perfect natural environment and surrounding area to study this subject. So as you can imagine, in the name itself, uh, our students are often involved in outdoor recreation activities. And so this photo you see on your screen here is in the Thunder Bay area where students got to go uh, ice climbing in, in winter, and this is uh, uh, an often a very popular activity that our students uh, appreciate participating in. Uh, tied into this experiential learning opportunity, of course, there are learning outcomes and our students have amazing takeaways from these opportunities. So once they're finished this opportunity, uh, the professors, the faculty members, the staff will then, of course, coordinate and, and elaborate on this experience to tie it into an educational outcome or a learning outcome. This is just one of many activities. I can't put all of the activities on here, otherwise, like I mentioned before, we, we could be here for days. Uh, but we'll dive into this program just one more time uh, in the unique learning opportunities section. Um, next, I'll pass over to Dr. Wei, who's gonna chat about political science, though. Okay. Um... So um, the Lakehead Political Science Department um, is obviously known for its high quality programs and for um, our teaching and, and really caring and cool professors who invest in the success of their students. Um, our goal and what we have been doing over the past couple of years, well, since the, the program was actually established, um, but specifically over the past 10 years since Dr. K and myself and a bunch of young faculty were added, is to provide a well-rounded political science education by applying both the theoretical and the practical modes of analysis. Um, and, the, and we examine the socioeconomic, the, the political, um, the economic and historical context within which power and politics um, are produced. Um, and so, we, our analysis go beyond institutions. So what governments do and what they do not do, what public policy is and all of that and those processes that go into pro pro producing them. However, our analysis go beyond those regular aspects of politics to actually include um, areas of the processes and of everyday life. And so our program is, is has six major areas that we cover in political science. 
political theory, international relations and world politics, law and politics, public administration and policy, indigenous politics and governance and comparative politics. And uh, if you are interested in applying to law school in the future, our pre-law program is actually um, a very um, um, a very unique one that specializes um, in preparing you and introdu by introducing you to law from the political science aspects. And actually students who have graduated from our program have gone to prestigious law schools, including the Lakehead University, Buralaskin Law School, Osgood Law School, and different law schools, um, both within the country, but also in the UK. And we also have students who have gone um, to, to, to graduate, st graduate school and, and have succeeded. I mean, our current chair, Dr. Patrick Kane, is actually a former graduate from the political science department. And so our program is, is well vast in the sense that we um, cover various aspects of politics, but I think one of our selling points, it's not only that we care for our students and our students are successful, but it's also that our class sizes and the intimate um, context within which our programs are delivered. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much for diving in and, and expanding on political science. I'm sure our viewers are appreciative to learn more about, as you mentioned, the areas of study that they can anticipate to focus on and, and really dive into here at Lakehead, but also speaking to uh, the professors and the reach that we have within our professors and the knowledge they bring. Uh, chatting about sort of where our majors have gone and where we've seen them uh, go as they've become lawyers, diplomats, business leaders, civil servants, politicians, lobbyists, political analysts, uh, teachers, and the, the range is really varied there. And that's, that's important to note. It's not a degree that's going to lead you into one career path. It's, it, it again, it gives you that flexibility to expand on what your passions are and where you see your t yourself taking that degree. Awesome. So next we're going to chat about uh, media, film, and communications, a program housed out of our Aurelia campus. I'll pass it over to uh, Dr. Fiddick, who will chat about uh, this program a bit. Yeah, media, film, and communications is uh, actually one of our more popular programs uh, with international students in interdisciplinary studies. It's a, it's a mix of critical media analysis, uh, media production, focusing primarily on video production, um, and uh, on the theory side, the program is very interdisciplinary. In, in addition to courses in media, film, and communication, students can uh, take courses, select courses in English, sociology, criminology, women's studies. Uh, we have an internship program that's placed students in local uh, media outlets like the, the local radio station, the um, local television stations, uh, photography studios, as well as the nonprofit cultural sector, including um, the local art museum, the YMCA, the opera house, so forth. Um, so um, it's very hands-on, uh, especially on the production side. And uh, one of the advantages of our program is that we have very small um, uh, uh, class sizes, I should say. So in the production classes, there's typically less than uh, 20 students in the class. So you get you know, a lot of um, attention from your instructor on how to use the equipment and so forth. And um, one of the things that I've noticed is that um, there's a very high degree of camaraderie among students. They get to know each other really well. They're always in the same classes with each other. And um, builds quite a sense of community in the program. Certainly, and, and to ex expand on that, also within the program itself, uh, on top of the, the unique learning opportunities and the experiential learning opportunities where you're involved in these hands-on labs where you are always working with production equipment, and, and as well as the internship program, as Dr. Fiddick mentioned, that's built into the program where students are working with uh, local placements, whether it be the, the nonprofit sector that's cultural and and all that sort of stuff, or it is for-profit businesses, such as Rogers TV, which is a major facet here in Canada. Um, is there, there's also the fourth year creative projects, which ends with an annual media arts showcase where students really get to present their work and own the knowledge they've built over their program. 
um, and I haven't been able to experience myself, but I've seen some of the outcomes, I've seen some of the projects from our students when I've, I've met with these students and chatted with them. And it's certainly amazing to see that that knowledge in, in four, four years, they're able to pick that up. On top of that, I also wanted to add on to your note about the camaraderie among our students. And I think that that uh, certainly applies to media film and communications because they're so hands-on in the classroom, but also speaking to the broader university where students are typically in smaller classes, they have the opportunity to, on a regular basis, interact with their professors and get to know their professors by their name and vice versa, the professor knows their students by the name, but also you get to meet your classmates and you get to interact together on, on group work, on experiential learning opportunities, all that sort of stuff. So certainly any program you're entering, you're, you're gonna make friends and you're gonna uh, naturally find your group within your class that then is also your support system. I'm a graduate of Lakehead University myself. I did my honors Bachelor of Commerce and I still, uh, to this day, my, some of my best friends are the same friends that I had in university that I met in first year, in my first year economics course, uh, and then the rest is history, essentially. So next we'll, we'll pass it over to uh, Dr. Brooks, who's gonna chat about our social justice studies program. Thanks, Jordan. The social justice studies program uh, is interdisciplinary, as we were talking about earlier, which means that students come to us from a variety of majors. In order to make that work for our students, we've got a very flexible program. And what that means is that we ask students to take two uh, required classes, a theory and a methods class. We're always interested in students being able to both theorize, but then also do research uh, to to do the intellectual work, but also do the work of social justice. And so we use those classes to frame the program, but after that students have an awful lot of choice in terms of what they take. They can do the course space option that Jordan was talking about earlier, where they would take an additional 3.0 FCEs, which can be six half courses or some combination of half courses and full courses. Students also, um, have three other options to take. So a little bit different than what Jordan described. We have a, we actually have a creative option within our program, which is pretty unique. Uh, we do have a research project. We don't call it a thesis, but that's pretty close to what Jordan was talking about. We have a practicum option as well, which matches students up with a local nonprofit or this year, because everything is online. Uh, we've been having students work with uh, organizations throughout Canada and the US and, and so that's an option for students so there's the f the four streams that students can choose from that give them an awful lot of flexibility allow them to design their uh, degree and help them choose their next path forward in terms of where our students go uh, many of them go on to PhD programs in Canada or abroad uh, we have some who work in the nonprofit sector or even the healthcare sector. There's a, an awful lot of overlap within social justice studies and health sciences, and we sometimes have courses that are actually offered out of that faculty uh, of, around issues like health disparity. We even have a student uh, who's considering going on to medical school. So we have students who pursue PhDs, MDs. Uh, we have students who think about or go on to law school or as I say, they, they work in the community in the nonprofit or another sector there as well. Um, I think bottom line is that our students tell us they come out fairly transformed. They really see the world differently after having looked at it through a social justice lens, intersectional uh, lens in terms of analyzing problems, but then also uh, opportunities to really think about how to act on the knowledge that they gain to act on the insights that they develop. Last thing I would say, actually I have two more things, sorry. Uh, uh, we have a really diverse student group, so not only do they come from different majors, but uh, they're diverse in terms of age, race, uh, nationality. We have about one third of our students are international students right now. Uh, and so that, I think that combination of students has created a really exciting uh, cohort environment within our social justice studies program. And then the other feature that's important uh, is that we have specializations or students can take a social justice specialization. And so what I mean by that is we have a very popular women's studies specialization that a social justice stu studies student can take. And that would, they would end up taking a full year class in theory and methods in women's studies, as well as doing work that is always focused on gender issues uh, within their other classes. And then if some of you are thinking I'm interested in social justice studies, but I'm an English major or I'm a sociology major, 
you could continue on and get an MA in English at Lakehead and do a social justice specialization, or you could continue on and get a uh, sociology MA and continue on or, and, and, and take the social justice studies specialization. So quite a bit of flexibility, both within our program and then our connections to other programs on campus. Awesome. Well, well thank you for adding that. And I, I really like to hear that um, the opportunities that our current students are getting within uh, working with companies that are both in Canada but also on the international scale and, and collaborating, I'm sure, providing some of their knowledge that they've already picked up in the program, they've learned in the program, to assist other companies in, in, their, in their reflection on, on social justice in general. Uh, next, I want to chat about the criminology program. Um, and when I say I want to chat about it, I'll pass over to Dr. Finnick, who will cover it a bit, and then I can also uh, add to it and build on to what he says. Yeah, criminology is our most popular program here in Aurelia, it, possibly even the most popular program in the faculty. Um, it has a uh, practitioner orientation and um, uh, I, it, you know, this probably appeals to students that there's a lot of good paying jobs in Canada and, and in the province in the criminal justice system. So a lot of our students, they go on to uh, jobs in uh, corrections and policing. Um, a lot of them use criminology as a degree to take to get into law school. Um, anyhow, so criminology involves the study of crime, including victimization, criminal, uh, criminality, criminal justice. It's a very interdisciplinary field again. It involves, uh, in addition to courses in specifically criminology, there are courses in sociology, psychology, political science. Uh, various themes in it include social justice and human rights, law and legal institutions, forensic science and criminalistics. Um, on the practitioner side of things, um, you know, getting a job in the future, we have a course field exposure where we bring in um, people working in the various discipline, various uh, sectors related to criminology. So for example, um, Aurelia, where we're based, has a headquarters of the provincial police. And uh, so we, we would bring in people um, working in these areas to tell students about careers in the area, how do you get into jobs in the area, so forth. Um, and uh, I don't know, that's about all I have to say for now. And no, I think you cover really well. I actually got to experience uh, you mentioned that the, the thematic areas of focus include social justice and human rights, law and legal institutions, and then the last one there was forensic science and criminalistics. And when I was on the Aurelia campus for my first time, uh, I actually got to experience and then go into a class that was, uh, the, the topics were surrounding forensic science and criminalistics and the learning that I picked up just sitting at the back of the room and, and hearing the teachers talk about it was quite impressive and also very interesting and it intrigued me and made me want to consider just taking it as a as a course on, on the side as a hobby but also then I, I got the opportunity to sit down and have a, a dedicated webinar for the criminology program uh, with one of the professors and the entire hour that we spent I, I learned an immense amount of knowledge and then she also expanded on some of the research that she's doing uh, on, on top of the, her teaching role, uh, then there is, of course, the university has professors doing research, and she's doing uh, research with police departments on body, body cameras and, and wearing those cameras in their policing efforts. Uh, and so it was very interesting to hear sort of her, her uh, take on that and, and all of that. So I certainly encourage any, any of our viewers, viewers, pardon me, that want to learn more about criminology, you can check out that webinar. Uh, with myself and Dr. Soliner uh, online at YouTube. So if you go to Lakehead University's YouTube, it's under the playlist Lakehead International Live. So I'll move on from there and I'll, I'll chat about unique learning opportunities. So uh, this is where we, we reintroduce the outdoor recreation program, uh, pardon me, the outdoor parks and recreation. So this, this opportunity here is a part of the sailing expedition. So this is actually on uh, Lake Superior, this photo. So Lake Superior is one of the world's largest freshwater lakes. Um, and it's also where we get to call home here in Thunder Bay. 
So 11 Lakehead students shaped their own grand adventure when they planned and executed a 12-day sailing expedition on Lake Superior. The experience was all part of an elective fourth year course for students in outdoor recreation, parks and tourism. That includes the opportunity for each student to acquire the competitive crew sail training certif certification by International Sail and Power Academy. Uh, the students did everything, says Outdoor Recreation, Parks and Tourism Professor Tom Potter, including an overnight sail where we navigated by traditional means, backed up by modern electronics. Um, along the way, students conducted a variety of research projects for the Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area, as well as Tourism Thunder Bay, including safe harbour assessments, identifying Arctic alpine uh, disjunct plants, invasive species monitoring, shoreline cleanups, and the production of educational and recreational videos. Uh, th this photo itself is actually from uh, one of their recreational videos, so it really highlighted the, all of the aspects of the trip, the, the research, uh, the academics of it, but then a, a more importantly, or maybe not more importantly, of course, you're, you're paying to come to learn all of the academics, but these students really bonded as a group of 11, and including their professor, and so, even though it looks a bit cold in this photo, they were jumping off the boat and swimming in the water and then they were docking at marinas and then they were meeting people on other boats. The experience, it's on YouTube, you can check it out. It looked phenomenal and I can't say enough about it. Um, highlighting of uh, just the, the overall experience highlights how experiential learning within uh, outdoor recreation, parks and tourism makes the program unique to Lake. It also speaks to the other interesting and unique learning opportunities that are available within each individual course. So another unique learning experience or learning opportunity within our visual arts department uh, is the juried student art expedition. So the Department of Visual Arts hosts an annual juried student art exhibition in which all students are invited to submit studio coursework to exhibit. So what that means is that students uh, get to actually create work within their course environment. So they're not doing it as an uh, addition to their work, they're actually doing it built into the program. And then they have the opportunity to submit that to uh, the juried art exhibition. The event is unique to Lakehead University and celebrates the high quality of student art uh, produced as a part of the program. Artwork is chosen by a jury of visual art instructors and later installed at the Thunder Bay Art Gallery for a five-week exhibition. The opening night includes an award celebration with over $7,000 in achievement awards presented to students for selected artworks in exhibition. So, of course, that $7,000 spread out among a variety of students for a variety of reasons and for a variety of different uh, media types. These students then can take that money and, and expand on sort of their own wheelhouse. So say for example, if a student was to take home a thousand dollar prize here, they would then be able to turn around and, and maybe upgrade some of their equipment that they use in the home environment, or if they use some of Lakehead's top-notch equipment at school, um, and they wanted to buy that exact same thing to recreate this art piece and, and then have a side business of selling their own art. Many of our students here at Lakehead have moved on into becoming uh, artists and, and selling their artwork for profit and participating in their own exhibitions, their own shows. Uh, one of my good friends uh, has been featured in many local art galleries and has been in, in many art galleries in Toronto as well. Uh, and now she's moved on to another degree within the art field and she hopes to tie in her, her psychology courses, which she completed at Lakehead as well. Uh, to be an art therapist. So it's all exciting and I really like to see how she was able to navigate and flex her her career opportunities but also the flexibility within the program allowed her to really speak to her passions and interests. So next I wanted to chat about career opportunities. So we've, we've done the journey of uh, starting academics at Lakehead, what you can anticipate from an undergraduate program side, a graduate program side. We dive, dove into, pardon me, many of our popular programs within our faculty. Of course, we didn't have time to dive into each and every one, um, but we certainly do hope to have webinars, more webinars about the, the other programs in the department. Um, and the list on your screen is not at all an exhaustive list. If I had an exhaustive list, we would probably have about 30 slides and that still wouldn't cover it. Um, 
but these are based on what we've reviewed where, where students are going after they graduate from the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities. Uh, they are becoming community organizers, editors, uh, mediators, musicians, police officers, policy analysts, uh, recreation coordinators, social media directors, teachers, translators, web designers. I only mentioned a few, of course, but uh, again, this is not an exhaustive list, but it really shows you how the broader faculty is really able to uh, provide a, a huge sum of career opportunities and career paths. And, and you also get to customize your own degree, essentially, and then taking the courses that you know you're passionate about. We understand as an institution, uh, based on the fact that if students are picking courses that they're most passionate about, that they know that they, they are interested in learning more about and that they want to expand their knowledge, that also equates to them being most successful in their program and attaining the high marks that they may need to uh, secure th their application or admission into a professional school or, or a next level of study. So if they're in an undergrad and they're moving up to a master's or even a master's moving into a PhD, uh, then we want to make sure that they're being they're able to customize the program and pick courses that they're going to be passionate about and be successful in. Did any of my panel uh, want to add to the career opportunities or maybe even speak to sort of where you've seen some of your students going in the past or, or some of the more recent career opportunities you've seen? This is a recent list, of course, uh, but uh, speaking right to faculty and, and professors. I'll talk, pass it over to Dr. Wei first. Um, again, um, because I'm a professor, I think um, students going to, to, to graduate school is, is one of the areas, but in political science, because of the nature of uh, the way we define politics, students go in any of these areas. Um, some of them have also gone to business, to law school. Um, one of our students is in medical school. So there are like the, 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 the opportunities are actually um, and boundless. And so you could go to grad school, you could go to law school, but you could also use our degrees as a terminal degree that allows you um, to go to different areas of employment around in, in the range that you have highlighted. But I, I do know, again, I want to highlight Dr. King, who is the chair of our program, is a graduate from our program. And one of our professors is a lawyer, um, but then he's like, I don't want to practice law anymore. And so he, he now teaches for us. I mean, there are, the range of opportunities are, are just uh, boundless. Certainly, and then of course, I like your mention of, of the professors specifically because it, it really speaks to uh, the fact that our professors bring in a really diverse range of knowledge. So they all haven't had the exact same experience. Everyone, everyone has their own experience in, in academics, of course, but then also whether they've moved on into the career path uh, or the, the job market first, and as you mentioned, become a lawyer and then realized years later, or maybe immediately even, that they would prefer to pursue higher uh, higher education in academia, and so they become a professor uh, at, at Lakehead University or any number of institutions. It's, it's really flexible. Once you, once you know exactly, you might, it might take you some years to understand where you want to take your degree, but we also have our, our Student Success Center, which offers many, many career supports so that our students are prepared to enter the, the workforce, or uh, of course, we have our, our Faculty of Graduate Studies that then are able to help students uh, move into a, a another level of study or potentially a one of our professional schools. I'll pass it over to Dr. Fiddick to add on as well. Yeah, some, some of our students, they, they've gone on to grad school, they've gone to work in the prison system, they, um, oops, sorry, they've gone to work with the police. Um, that That's in criminology, in uh, media studies, um, students go on to work in uh, communications, things like that. Um, the other thing, you know, um, I'm also in interdisciplinary studies and we have a wide range of, um, see, the thing is, is that, you know, if you're like me, when I was uh, going to university, I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to do. And um, interdisciplinary studies is sort of like a university within a, a single department where students they can study anthropology biology criminology english geography history uh, media film communications political science psychology sociology history um, we're adding 
business in the form of entrepreneurship, chemistry, and French. So there's a wide range of areas that you can sort of bundle into um, a degree and um, sort of, um, you know, it's very flexible too and, and forgiving. If you, if you don't really know what you want to do in the first year, you just change, uh, you could choose up to four different areas to, to explore and then in your second or even in some cases up to your third year you can decide okay well these are the areas I want to study and and you're not really set back by that and um, and at the end of it you have a well-rounded uh, education where you can you know many different areas are open um, you know the main thing is is that uh, you know because you know many different things you can work independently um, and uh, there's a lot of jobs that employers want that employees that uh, you know can work independently and um, think for themselves. Certainly, yeah, and I, I can add on to that just slightly. And then, Dr. Brooks, you'll have a chance to chat about career opportunities too. Is, is the fact that with uh, with the experience that Lakehead is able to offer, and also I, I know we talked about experiential learning opportunities, the opportunity. And then also the opportunity to work with your classmates and be in group projects and, and work on these really broad projects. There's also, there's a lot of self, uh, self motivation and you have to be dedicated to the, the courses, the programs, the projects yourself, because you need to complete the work at the end of the day. And then I think that's also what employers see as, as they look at a Lake University the degree, they know students are coming out of that degree and they have the experience, they have the knowledge to be able to get projects done and complete them on time and, and do them on their own or, or also work in a group setting, team setting, all that sort of stuff. Dr. Brooks, I'll pass it over to you. Sure, thanks Jordan. I just wanted to add that uh, if you like social justice studies, you might wonder what employment opportunities are there. Rather than talk about specific jobs, what I usually do is point students to at least three different web portals where they can find positions uh, that that there, our degree prepares them for. So within Canada, there's a site called Charity Village where they could find work that they should be prepared for. Internationally, there's a site called Human Rights Jobs that uh, can help them identify jobs anywhere in the world. And then a similar site is run by the School Foundation out of the UK. And also it's a, they have a job posting site for human rights, uh, social justice, equity jobs uh, from anywhere in the world. So without trying to pin it down, uh, it's more, there are opportunities and there's sort of some clear paths that students can uh, follow to find what kind of employment opportunities are out there. Certainly, and I, I think that that's a good note to mention is the fact that uh, our career, our career services team actually kind of works the process backwards. So they will encourage students to explore the, all of the career opportunities. So all of the titles, all the positions that they could potentially hold and then work backwards from there and see what degrees you should hold to then fill that position and, and what courses you might wanna to take to, to add on to that knowledge and be able to go into the job market and be able to say, I, I have a minor in this or I did a major in this or I did a double major as we talked about, uh, that really prepares you to enter that, that job that you knew that you might be passionate about. So next I wanted to do a brief cover of an outstanding alumni. So Vonnie here is, is currently um, working for Sun Life and she's a financial advisor. She came to Lakehead from China. She is an English and math graduate of Lakehead University. Um, while studying at Lakehead University and, and in a recent interview with Vani, uh, we chatted about her experience at Lakehead and, and some of her most important takeaways. Um, and she really liked the fact that uh, most student life at Lakehead is, is with ease and which one that can develop a close connection with faculty and fellow friends. So the, the natural environment here within our campus communities allows for our students to build friendships and build connections with professors, but also classmates, support staff, the same staff that you uh, work with on day one will potentially be the same staff that you're working with to graduate and, and, and round out your degree. Also, she said that her, her multidisciplinary studies, so within English and math, has been invaluable to help her build both the, the communication, analytical, and interper interpersonal skills, pardon me, uh, as a financial advisor. Um, she also mentioned that she's deeply indebted uh, for the personal connections she made during her late years, so the, the friendships and, and again the connections that she made with the broader community here uh, has really significantly impacted her. 
Thank you for checking out today's video. If you have any questions, you can always comment below. Stay connected and follow us on our social media channels to stay informed about upcoming webinars and get an insider sneak peek of Lakehead University. See you next time. Thank you.